All right, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Destroy coming at you with a new video. We are going to go over wide receivers today. So we're just going to start off. I'm um, trying a new app, see how it works, see how you guys like it. Uh, just a trial and error type thing. So let's just see how it goes. So right off the bat, we have DeAndre Hopkins, who is listed questionable against the Chargers at 7,800, the most expensive wide receiver. Um, he is going to have a good game. Uh, he will be against the Chargers defense, but there is nobody on the Chargers that is going to lock down DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I don't see anybody doing exactly what Jalen Ramsey did, and I think he's going to go off on them like he did New Orleans. I don't think his high as fantasy points, but he is going to have that game. Next at 7,600 is Devontae Adams against Denver. He did have a really good game last week, uh, but week one against the Bears, he did get shut down, even though he was getting double teamed. Against Denver's defense, he's going to go up against Chris Harris. Devontae Adams is in a bad play, but I would either go up to Hopkins or I would go down $100 and go to Amari Cooper at Miami. I mean, there's no one that's going to cover Amari Cooper at all. At 7,500, he's a really good play. Dallas is probably going to score 40 on Miami this week. Um, I think that offense is just going to destroy Miami's defense, just like the Patriots technically did um, and the Ravens did week one. I think it's just pretty much for those offenses playing Miami, just a uh, kind of like Patriots had a scrimmage, so they get to just try new stuff out. But yeah, Mark Cooper at 7,500. I would definitely go Cooper over Adams. Um, I would not go Michael Thomas this week. Um, if you want to put him in a GPP, you can. But at $7,400, like there's so many more options that I trust here than Michael Thomas. Just because Teddy Bridgewater is going to be the starting quarterback. And we didn't see much of anything from Michael Thomas against Seattle. Um... So, or not against Seattle, I'm sorry. Um, last week against the Rams, we didn't see anything once Teddy Bridgewater got in the game, especially of Kamara and Thomas. So uh, I said, Kamara and Thomas, I'm not playing this week just because I, I have to see what that offense is going to do. Seattle's defense could be good, but I don't trust Seattle's defense either. So like, like I said, Thomas is not a cash, but uh, definitely GPP look. 7,300, like I said, I would go Julio Jones over Michael Thomas. I mean, Julio Jones is going to play Indiana, uh, Indianapolis. Um, last week, him and Calvin Ridley had one hell of a game, even though they should have won by a lot more. Um, Julio Jones for 7,300 against Indianapolis is going to be good. Uh, Calvin Ridley finally got some exposure last week, so it'll definitely help out Julio Jones as far as defensive coverage. Next at 7,100 is Antonio Brown against the Jets. Uh, Antonio Brown is a good GPP play here also, not a cash. Any New England receiver is a good GPP play just because they're going to score. Um, it's just a matter of how much that receiver is going to get, in my opinion. Um, they do have Antonio Brown, Edelman, Dorsett, Gordon, and a pretty good running back core. So, 7,100, not a good cash, good GPP play, though. Uh, Keenan Allen is questionable, but Keenan Allen's going to play. At 7,000, Keenan Allen is one of the best plays. If you're going to pay up for a wide receiver, you're not even paying up that high for him. He's going to get targeted 12 times. He's playing against Houston's defense. He's going to be that number one receiver. Philip Rivers loves him. So Keenan Allen, 7,000, is probably one of the best plays you could do here. Same to said to Godwin. Godwin's playing the worst defense in the league, but he does have Jameis Winston at quarterback, which is question marks. But 6,900, the way he's been playing, Godwin is one of the good plays. So I would either consider you have to play either Allen or Godwin in any cash lines this week. Juju, I'm not playing Juju. The only reason I'm not playing Juju at 6,900, like play Godwin. If you're going to play a 6,900 player, play Godwin because you don't, like I said, it's a backup quarterback. You don't know how good Mason Rudolph's going to be, um, especially against San Francisco's defense, who has looked pretty good, especially passing wise. Um, so Juju has 69. I mean, Juju has not played like he's supposed to, but 
Also, like I said, Big Ben just got hurt last week, so you don't really know there. Um, Sammy Watkins at 6,800 against Baltimore. Um, I love Sammy Watkins this week. Probably one of my favorite plays. The same as Allen and Godwin. Um, Baltimore and Casey is probably going to have a shootout the more I keep looking at it. And you have to have a Baltimore or Kansas City player. You have to at this point. Uh, Sammy Watkins is going to get his catches, especially that defenses know of potential of Robinson and Hardman, uh, which we'll talk about as soon as we get there. But Watkins is probably going to have an explosive game again. Adam Thielen, uh, I'm just going to go over Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs, I think, is like 6,000. Scroll down. Yeah, 6,000. Um, both Thielen and Diggs are good GPPs, especially going uh, going against Oakland this week. Maybe Kirk Cousins finally has his redemption game. But just because of how Kirk Cousins has played, I don't like either one of them in cash, especially since either one of them can go off. Um, but if I'm going to play either one, I'm going to play Stefan Diggs at 6,000, then Adam Thielen at 6,700 against Oakland if I were to put him in a cash play. Galladay, um, the same thing. I'll go over Galladay, and we'll find where Marvin Jones is here really quick. Um, Marvin Jones is 5,000. Okay. Um, Galladay and Jones... Definitely going Galladay here in this just because he finally got uh, some receptions, targets, yards that he was due from week one. Uh, They are playing against Philly's defense. And if Philly's offense is banged up, that means Detroit is going to get the ball a lot more just because Philly has no one on that offense really besides Wentz, Aguilar, and Sanders. And Aguilar is... I can't see him as a number one receiver. I honestly can't. So Galladay and Jones might be on the field a lot more. So Galladay's a really good play at 6,600. Mike Evans is probably my favorite play here at 6,600. He is way too cheap. He was 7,900 week one. He's 6,600 and he has not had a good game. But if any game is going to be the good game, it's going to be this week against the Giants. Same with Godwin. Godwin's going to have Giants' as number one corner. <clears throat> so I think Mike Evans has a huge week this week. And so does Tyler Boyd against Buffalo's defense. Uh, Boyd might go against Buffalo's number two cornerback also, just the way that uh, Cincinnati's used John Ross. And John Ross can just run down the field. Uh, so Boyd might be against the number two, and I really like his price at 6500 in a game that should be a back-and-forth game especially the way Josh Allen has been playing. Um, Josh Allen's either going to throw a touchdown or an interception. So it, I expect uh, I expect Boyd to see a lot of targets this week. T.Y. Hilton is questionable against Atlanta's cornerbacks. Um, I don't really like T.Y. Hilton here at 6,400 against Atlanta. Um, Atlanta's defense really isn't all that the fact that they almost lost last week to a very injured philadelphia team scares the hell out of me as far as atlanta's defense because they that should never happen uh but ty hilton is kind of banged up i'm pretty sure he's playing but it's 6400 i mean 6400 i would rather go tyler boyd or mike evans um Galloway, I would pay up just 100 or 200 more. Edelman, like I said, it's all those Patriots receivers. It's a good GPP, not cash. Tyler Lockett, uh, great play here going against New Orleans with DK Metcalf getting in the offense. And uh, Disley, their tight end, uh, helps out Lockett. Um, So I expect Lockett to have a really good game against New Orleans. Like I said, you don't know what uh, Bridgewater is going to do with that offense, so Seattle might see the ball a lot this week. I already covered Stefan Diggs. Marquise Brown against Baltimore. Like I said, this game's probably, I'm leaning towards more and more of a shootout. So you either have to have a Baltimore or Kansas City receiver. Marquise Brown is probably the best receiver that you can get out of Baltimore. So if you're going to go Baltimore receiver, take Marquise Brown. He will get you those points. Don't worry. Um... DJ Moore, 
I'm going to do the same thing. DJ Moore is here. We'll find Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel is 4,800. Don't take a Carolina receiver this week. If Cam Newton plays, maybe. But if he doesn't, don't take anybody from Carolina this week. Don't even take McCaffrey. It's too much of a risk. Um, I think Allen's going to be Carolina's quarterback. So I would stay clear of Carolina receivers. Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey, I believe, are both going to be out. Michael Gallup's out. Here's where stuff gets fun for Oakland. Williams and Jacobs are both questionable, like an actual questionable. We don't know if they're going to play. If Williams and Jacobs is out, I would definitely go Darren Waller and Renfro uh, for Oakland. Renfro is probably going to be the one that gets all the targets. Um, let's see if we can even find Renfro. Renfro's 3,700. Um, he got targeted eight times last week, only targeted three times last week. But if Williams is out, Renfro is probably going to be that number one. So look for Renfro if Williams and Jacobs is out. John Brown. I love John Brown. I feel like Josh Allen this week. You have to love John Brown. He is playing against Cincinnati's terrible defensive backs right now. And Josh Allen, I think, is probably going to have his best week so far this season. And John Brown's his go-to receiver. So John Brown's definitely the best play. Josh Gordon, like I said, with um, New England receivers, definitely GPP, not cash. Calvin Ridley, I love his price. Um, If I were to go Julio or Ridley, Julio's obviously the better play, but Ridley has more Ridley has more potential at his price of 5300 He can easily have a really good game. I like any receiver that goes against a number two cornerback every time. Um, so right here we have Donard Robinson at 5200 Hartman at 5000 If you want to take a Kansas City receiver, like I said, Sammy Watkins is really cheap. I would go Sammy Watkins, but if you need to pay down you take a 50-50 chance on Robinson or Hardman. You honestly do. Um, regardless of who got what, Hardman should have had a touchdown last week. So his points per game, if you want to look at that, his his uh, receptions, targets, all that. Like He had one, um, should have had a second one that got called back. So, yeah, like I said, he only had one target in week one, but... It's a 50-50, whatever you guys want to play there. Like I said, Watkins is probably the better play. John Ross, honestly, I think, don't get me wrong. <laughs> the, his fantasy points don't lie. He's an explosive receiver this year. He was not last year. He was not anything what anyone thought he was going to be season one. He sort of redeemed himself this season, but I'm not bought on him yet. I need to see another good week before I can fully invest in John Ross. He's not a bad cash or GPP play at 5,100. Um, he might, uh, like I said, I believe he's going to go against Buffalo's number one corner. He might get locked down this week. He might not. His speed is so fast. You never know, but uh, I'd rather go Boyd than Ross here. Next, we have Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk. Larry Fitzgerald's only $100 more, and Larry Fitzgerald has been targeted. Oh, my God. He has not left the field. This man, I believe he is like 36, 37. I could be wrong, but look at this. He has been targeted 24 times for 13 catches and a hundred and or 217 yards. Like, they're playing against Carolina's defense, and if Carolina is without Cam Newton and Allen plays bad, Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald never leave the field. They get targeted all the time. They're really good plays in GPP and cash, in my opinion. Um, would love to see them in my lines. I'm probably going to have one of them in one of my lines this week. Uh, we do have Goodwin against Pittsburgh. Um, if I'm doing a San Francisco receiver, I'm not doing Pettis. I'm doing Debo Samuel. The only reason I'm doing Debo Samuel is he had seven targets, 86 yards, and a touchdown. 
The reason I'm doing Debo Samuel is they were so high on Debo Samuel in the preseason. He had a terrible week one. They didn't get to use him the way they wanted to. But week two, he had a really good game. Godwin's their number one. And he's going against, uh, he'll go against Fitzpatrick. Um, Debo is going to go against, and I think Hayden, if Hayden's not hurt, he'll be going against Hayden. And I like Samuel against Hayden, then God, or good one against Fitzpatrick. Uh, Will Fuller, you could play Will Fuller. I don't like any other Houston receivers than Hopkins, Mike Williams, same thing. I like Allen way more than Williams, especially at 7,000. I don't like uh, any Green Bay receivers other than Adams this week. I really don't. Emmanuel Sanders, everyone's high on Emmanuel Sanders. He had a really, really, really great game, and he's been playing out of his mind going back to before his injury. 4,800, he's not a bad play if you need a cheap receiver at 4,800. Sanders is that guy. I don't like any New Jersey receivers against new england i don't i don't trust falk i mean just look at what they did against cleveland with falk i don't like him at all dk metcalf great play at 4700 like he's gonna get his targets and receptions he's probably gonna get a touchdown this week against new orleans like dk metcalf 4700 play him randall cobb i'm not playing randall cobb nope you'll see why uh we're gonna go down Cole Beasley had a really good week last week, but go Brown, then Beasley. Uh, Vandal Scantling, not taking anybody but Adams, like I said. Um, Sinu, definitely not go anybody higher. Ted Ginn didn't even play last week, basically. Uh, Amendola has been put aside between Galladay Jones and probably going to be Hawkinson before him. Renfro, great play. Benny Fowler, I'm not playing anybody on New York. No matter what, Aguilar. If you need a cheap receiver at thirty six hundred, play Aguilar. He's gonna get receptions. Play him. Um. Other than that, I don't see anybody down here that I would take. JJ Nelson's hurt apparently, so Renfro. Just just take Renfro. I'm telling you, best play you'll you'll take. Anyway, guys, that's looking like it's it. That all I see. Um, if you guys enjoy the video, leave a like. Uh, let me know how you felt about this video rather than just me on my face talking. If you like this video better, just leave it in the comments, and I will do these videos from now on. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.